so yeah good good morning everyone so as uh, as already introduced i'll be talking about uh, private 5g deployments using open source 5g core uh, uh, so the thing is how many of you know how many of you are aware why there is lot of discussion happening around 5g uh, when we i mean among the software developers ha have you any anyone anyone who is talking about it yeah so why it happened is because there's lot lot of softwareization around the networks that's called uh, sdn and there is a uh, lot of virtualization that's happening uh, that is nfv so the concepts of vnf uh, the virtual network function and uh, software defined net networks are driving force of uh, a 5g network so uh, I'll, I'll be talking more about it uh, meanwhile just a small intro about my research organization that's called idrbt so uh, the institute mainly works on uh, banking solutions there are multiple labs related to ai ml cyber security etc uh, i'm from the 5g use case lab it was the first 5g use case lab that was awarded in india back in 2020 i hope if you watched the live stream yesterday uh, the prime minister narendra modi uh, dedicated 100 more 5g use case labs to uh, several institutions across the country so uh, moving further i'll this will be uh, my discussion uh, that i'll be talking about so uh, first first uh, first is the motivation so what are the technologies that generally everyone uses in enterprise uh, can you name a few like for what what networking technologies are being used wi-fi i think the most popular one is wi-fi or uh, you have uh, ethernet cables LAN that you use within a campus. So uh, the problem with LAN, LAN is of course mobility is an issue. So that's why we moved on to Wi-Fi. And uh, now why we are saying uh, a 5G network is better than Wi-Fi due to many reasons. First, the speed, just ignore the speed for a moment. Uh, second is it provides better uh, mobility like the handover between two access points compared to Wi-Fi is way better in 5G and uh, the security so anyone knows what is the uh, what is the security of wi-fi have you heard about wpa correct everyone has heard so the 5g is using uh, aka protocol other than eap that is uh, th that is also a common protocol that is used in networks so other than this uh, it it provides isolation now now when i say Public 5G and pi private 5G. What what do you really understand? So what is a public 5G network? Can anyone tell me? The one that is everyone using. Use, that's available for the consumers, end consumers. We all have mobile phones. Uh, like Jio and Airtel, they converted your SIM without actually going to the store. You started using 5G all of a sudden. Uh, whereas private 5G finds its application uh, in enterprises and industry. So I'll just give a brief why public 5G and pri private 5G, why an organization actually requires a dedicated 5G network. I mean, that's the reasons are quite trivial. trivial. For example, uh, if you're working in an enterprise or industry, you do not want downtimes. So it should be bound with certain set of SLAs. You want s a certain type of mission criticalness. So to, to, uh, to ensure that you're not struggling with the issues that are faced by the uh, general public or general consumer, you uh, come up with a solution that's that's called private 5g where where if you read the last point so are you aware of closed user group in access control uh, that's a very common term that is being used so people who are working in how many of you uh, are working in security domain anyone i mean you can raise properly half-hearted raise won't make any difference so if if you are uh, working or if you have a certain knowledge of security probably access control you would have encountered the term uh, closed user group uh, whereas private 5g comes with a new term that's called closed access group so your access points that means your radios or your radio access networks so a collection of radio access networks is what uh, we call a closed access group so that means the private 5G users have access to those set of radio access networks. That's, that, that's what the term closed access group mean. Uh, moving on to, okay, uh, these are the type of deployment. So every enterprise would not like to, uh, they, do, they do not have that much capital to invest 
uh, to come up uh, with a standalone 5G. What what is standalone 5G? Where user equipments, uh, your radio access network, and the core network, everything resides in the same enterprise premises. So every organization or every enterprise does not have that much capital to invest. So therefore, there are certain uh, deployment models that are proposed by 3GPP. By the way, 3GPP is a standardization uh, organizations in telecom. And uh, so, so to support possible deployment models for uh, Industry 4.0, so can anyone tell uh, the goals of Industry 4.0? Anyone? Uh, because the moment I'll tell, uh, the terms are quite familiar. So anyone, anyone uh, who has heard the term Industry 4.0? I'm sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. Time-sensitive delivery. What else? Machine correct. Correct. Machine-to-machine -machine, uh, communication, basically. Uh, there are a few more. For example, data analytics, and uh, I would rather say automation. Okay, so these are the goals of Industry 4.0. Uh, so 5G and specifically private 5G helps to realize certain goals exclusively for industry. So as you can see, uh, there are four deployment strategies. So the first one that I told is it's actually not present. That's the isolated setup. That means everything is inside the premises. The second thing, or uh, the first which you can see here will be that the core network, the right side, does it have a pointer? Oh, it's not. Uh, is it from the down side or? Okay, oh, th thank you. So uh, if, if we talk about uh, uh, shared shared 5G, so or uh, a non-standalone or basically public network integrated. So public network that is Geo, Airtel, and all those network providers. If we try to integrate that along with our enterprise, so there are solutions related to that as well. So in the first solution, uh, we have a dedicated radio access network. That means the enterprise devices will be able to register to the RAN radio access network that is exclusively uh, inside your premises. However, the network functions, so, so uh, again, uh, network functions are like microservices. How many of you, what, what is microservice? I think this everyone, most of you know. So uh, it will deliver functionality, like it can standalone deliver functionality. So all the network functions, uh, for example, your access and mobility function, uh, like your authentication server function, your uh, session management function, your uh, user data management function, your user plane, manage, user plane uh, function, everything is deployed as a service. And collection of service is split into uh, control plane and user plane. Any, any SDN person here? Anyone who knows SDN? OK, one, two, a few of you. So SDN, you split control plane and data plane. And uh, like it's a cent I mean, kind of a uh, control plane is logically centralized, I would rather say. So. Uh, the, these things are provided by the external network. Now, there is another set of things, uh, like cloud-native core functions. How many of you are aware of the term cloud-native? I hope most of you. So in this case, these were the physical network functions that were provided, whereas in the case of uh, a second case, second possible deployment could be that the cloud-native uh, core functions are, I mean, the core network functions are deployed over cloud. Third setting could be the RAN is also shared. Now here comes the role of closed access group that I was talking about. So only the users who are part of enterprise will be given access to the private network. Rest, all others users who will be accessing shared RAN will be getting access to the public network that everyone will use. So only the closed access group users will get access to the enterprise network. And uh, again, we have uh, core network function. So there is another important term uh, that's called uh, network slicing. Uh, that we talk in uh, 5G, where you have, uh, it provides better isolation. Your network functions are segregated from the public network. So that means, so in this case, uh, this deployment scenario. So uh, the last one is an enterprise, yeah, enterprise, enterprise slice model, where uh, your user plane function is exclusively dedicated for the enterprise. Okay, so moving on to popular open source core networks. 
So uh, in our lab, we have been extensively using uh, Eurocom's open air interface 5G. So uh, this this uh, has both sort of deployments. It, you can deploy it uh, uh, as a bare metal. You can also deploy uh, in a VN, I mean, in a virtual machine kind of an environment, or you can even go with a Dockerized setup. So all sorts of deployments are available. Another popular one is the free 5GC. So free 5GC is also providing all the network functions separately. Plus, it also has, it also supports uh, slicing. I think it's hello. Volume is quite less, I think. Hello. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, similarly, there is Open 5GS. There is Magma Core. There is SD Core. There are there are op I mean there is Open 5G Core. So there are multiple uh, open source core network deployments that are available that you can utilize uh, for a small uh, organization kind of a setup, or you can utilize this for your uh, academic and research purposes. And there are lot of test beds, a lot of other test beds uh, that provide you uh, I I mean access. Uh, like very, I mean, they they provide you access at a very reduced cost because if you go for cores that are provided by Ericsson and Nokia, they come they come in tens of lakhs, or you get uh, virtual access that's again close to uh, hundreds of dollars per month. Okay, so this th this solution is quite cheaper. You need to just invest into the hardware. That means the radio equipment you need to invest. Rest everything is softwareized, so you'll be able to access everything almost at no cost. You just need the uh, device to run things. So this is the setup. I mean, I'll just skip this. OK, uh, so I'll quickly just tell you about the use cases that we have been working uh, at IDRBT. Uh, the first is the 5G testbed uh, that, I mean, using the open source uh, Open Air 5G, uh, the, or, or that is uh, OAI 5G and Free 5G. See, we came across uh, with a test bed where you can uh, integrate your application. So currently, we also are presenting a demo that's already active in uh, New Delhi right now. They are presenting a very small uh, people counter use case uh, that is being implemented. That application is integrated with this test case, and you can count the people. And if you are able to integrate one application, you will be able to integrate any type of application you wish to. Uh, another is uh, financial literacy in rural areas. So we actually took a, a van, a van like a, it's an ATM van, and we integrated uh, our network with it. And uh, okay, and along with it, we were able to uh, help the villagers or people staying in remote areas to learn about uh, financial literacy. Let's say uh, banking transactions, ATM usage, and things like that. Another use case is uh, securing the edge for banking. This is the current research area that I'm working on, uh, where user end user may not be uh, that aware about the security. So he, uh, the the microservices or the functionalities of a uh, application are pulled to the edge, whereas end user is just left with a uh, user interface. So in that case, we are securing the end user way better than the current uh, uh, application deployment. And uh, the last thing is the untrusted access via N3IWF. So as I mentioned, uh, there, is also, uh, there is also a scope to integrate your Wi-Fi networks and Ethernet, Ethernet uh, with your core 5G solutions. For that, we use N3IWF. Other use cases you can find out on our uh, website. And uh, so I mean, yeah. These are the, I mean, set of future work that we are currently doing. So while selecting the private 5G, uh, where we need to actually place the network functions, and uh, then coming up with a security framework to choose uh, which would be the best choice of deployment, and analyzing popular threats using uh, some attack simulations and the popular threat models, or let's say the OWASP top 10, for example. And uh, much later, we will be looking into the uh, the hot topic in uh, 5G that is open RAN and issues related to it. So uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. So if there are any questions, I mean, can we take? We have, yeah, one question we can take and later, like, I'll be there for both the days so we can have a discussion outside. Okay. So it's a radio by a national instrument. It's uh, called USRP B210. So the same way. Yes, yes, correct, correct. Thank you.